The following video is about tapping an important new source of fresh water for primarily the water needs of Central and Southern California. If you're interested in somewhat radical and futuristic ideas for water management, you can check out some of my other YouTube videos. All of them involve moving seawater inland to solve a wide variety of difficult problems. Now, let's look at the problem California has concerning the availability of fresh water. It's not really a problem with a lack of water. It's a problem with the distribution of the water that does exist. Most of California's water comes from rainfall in the north part of the state, snowmelt in the Sierra Nevada mountains, and some pumping of groundwater. Even if the growth of the state were stopped completely, there would still be critical shortages of water during periods of prolonged drought. More droughts, and ones that last longer, are now more likely as the result of climate change and global warming. For example, after a four-year drought from 2011 to 2014, California's reservoirs were dangerously low. For example, New Maloney's reservoir was only about 15% full. Another year of drought would have been disastrous. When rain and snow is below average, pumping of groundwater helps to meet the state's needs, but groundwater is limited and it can't be a long-term solution. For example, since 1920, excessive pumping of groundwater has already caused land to actually sink an estimated 28 feet in many places in the Central Valley. Currently, much of the water from the Northern California area and the mountains is stored in reservoirs like Lake Shasta. A significant amount of this water is then sent to Central and Southern California by way of the California Water Project. In most of California, there is virtually no rain for six to nine months. Irrigation is thus essential for most areas. This image clearly shows the land that is irrigated and the land that isn't. One possible solution to getting more water is to redirect water flows from the North Coast rivers of California, instead of the waters from these rivers being wasted by flowing into the sea, they would sustain and even bring new life to large parts of California. Of course, you couldn't take all of the water from these rivers. Some of the flow is necessary to support local economies, recreation, fishing, etc. But the Klamath River is a good example of how during periods of maximum flow, some water could be considered surplus, and thus it would be reasonable to transfer it inland where it could do more good. It may surprise you to know that there have actually been many plans to transfer water from the North Coast to Central and Southern California. These proposals, some dating back all the way to 1966, have even included plans to divert water from as far away as Alaska and Canada. In fact, this video was inspired by an article written by Richard Cathcart concerning a macro imagineering of a water supply mega project. You can see the reference section at the end of this video for more information. Building pipelines across land involves many problems. The biggest problem with tapping the North Coast rivers is that there are mountain ranges between them and the interior of California. Pumping or tunneling through these mountains would just be way too expensive to make the project practical. The only potentially cost-effective way to transfer North Coast fresh water to the interior of California would be via an undersea pipeline. So far, the country of Turkey has built the largest undersea pipeline to transport fresh water. It stretches from the Turkish mainland to the Turkish part of the island of Cyprus. It has been operating successfully since 2014. The Turkish pipeline is made of a special high-pressure polyethylene material which will float underwater. The pipeline doesn't rest on the seabed, so it is secured in place by cables that are anchored to the bottom. The depth of the pipeline is deep enough so it is not adversely affected by the surface movements of the sea. It is also designed to be somewhat flexible so it can withstand expected water movements. The Turkish pipeline is five and a quarter feet in diameter. If this is not big enough for California, 
polyethylene pipes up to 11 and a half feet in diameter are available. In fact, even larger underwater pipelines and tunnels are possible. Norway is currently working on plans for a massive underwater floating tunnel that would be part of a highway along its western coast. It would cost about $25 billion. There are only four countries in the world that have economies larger than California. Specifically, California's economy is about 6.2 times larger than Norway's, so California should be able to spend even more than $25 billion on a North Coast pipeline. All of California's North Coast rivers start in the mountains and flow west into the ocean. Depending on which rivers are tapped, the pipeline would be about 310 miles long. The Russian River is a good example of the dramatic water fluctuations that occur in the North Coast Rivers. The maximum flow is 102,000 cubic feet per second. However, the average flow is only 2,263 cubic feet per second. So it's obvious that a fixed rate of water can't be taken from these rivers. The vast majority of the water harvested from the North Coast rivers would have to be taken during periods of high flows. This means taking water during the winter and early spring. These are the months that agriculture, which is one of the biggest users of water, actually needs the least amount of water. So how can water from the North Coast rivers be best utilized? The answer is storage. Their water can be stored in two ways. One way is to use the river water for groundwater recharging in the Central Valley. The other is to actually use the water for immediate needs, but cut the normal releases from reservoirs. This will allow more water to be stored in the reservoirs so it is available for release in the dry summer months. Moving the river water through the pipeline could be very expensive if pumping were necessary. Instead of pumps to move the water over mountain ranges, the pipeline could be designed to largely work by simple gravity. The route would be all underwater until it connected to the massive Sacramento River diversion tunnel that is planned to be built under the San Joaquin Delta. This diversion tunnel will be linked to the California aqueduct system, feeding water mostly to the Central Valley and Southern California. Water could also be extracted from the rivers by a gravity system. Small dams would be constructed across each of the rivers. They would be just high enough to create a small pond that would have a drain pipe projecting enough above the riverbed so sediment wouldn't enter the drain. When water levels were above the top of the pipe, it would function like a drain. The drain pipe would be connected to a pipeline under the riverbed and connected to the main pipeline in the ocean. Details such as fish ladders and valves to fine tune the amount of water drained off would of course be necessary. The exact amount that would be extracted from the North Coast rivers will be debatable, but we can get an idea of what might be done. First, the Sacramento River has an average flow of about 28,000 cubic feet per second. The combined average flow of all six North Coast rivers, which also includes the Rogue River in Oregon, equals about 40,000 cubic feet per second. If only half of this water were transferred to the California Water Project, it would equal more than the average flow of the entire Sacramento River. Of course, in order for this project to work, there would have to be cooperation and coordination between many agencies that regulate water for the state. This project can be done. The question now is whether it would be cost effective to do so. This would require engineers, construction contractors, environmentalists, water agencies, and politicians to investigate specific costs and, very importantly, the benefits of the project. One way or another, California needs more water. It's just a question of how. I hope you found this video interesting. So thanks for watching and the references are next.